there to talk about our operating system. Um, the Macintosh uses what we call the system and finder, and it's a very easy to use. Um, they call it user-friendly. I hate that expression. It's very hackneyed or overused. Um, but it's graphically oriented, visual, very visual, so that you don't have to remember a lot of commands. And what does the Amiga use? The Amiga uses Amiga DOS. Mm -hmm. And the main reason for Amiga DOS was so that the person utilizing the computer did not have to be a computer literate person. Uh, basically, we use a similar system to your Macintosh, which is you point and click, and the programs actually run, or you perform whatever calculations you want. So you don't need to be a typist, number one, and you definitely don't need to be a computer programmer to use these computers today. Well, I think, I think today the, one of the big issues in computing is, is user friendliness. And something that, that fascinates me, and maybe you all can elaborate on, is I'd, I'd like, if you could, very briefly, kind of tell us how and when you got started in computing, what it was like in the old days with the user interfaces, what it took to get things done, and how that's changed with the machines that we have today. Well, Len, what's, we started in 1977. We started with the original Commodore computer. Uh, back then, you basically received a one-page manual and a lot of good luck. Uh, you had to be, number one, a good typist. Uh, number two, you had to be able to actually go out and figure the computer and what made it tick and what didn't make it tick. The amount of resource materials in the library was none. So what has happened in the last 10, 15 years is the average home user can actually sit down in front of one of these machines and actually generate something in a matter of minutes without having to go through and do a lot of computer research. That's the whole idea. You unpack them, set them up, and you're ready to start working immediately. Well, I'm excited to see that. Okay. I started in the mainframe environment because of my programming background um, and then started selling Apple IIs in a retail store in Boston. And at that time, the home market was a very large market. Dealers were able to sell computers at high margins and high volume. And now the things have turned away from that a little bit. The system's prices are coming down. Uh, they're becoming more available um, at less price to the homeowner and small business user. Uh, I agree also that the systems are very simple to use. You can become productive in a day using the system. Um, but there are more sophisticated applications that do require some assistance. Jerry? Well, my background um, precedes these because uh, I was in the insurance <laughs> business for many, many years and uh, was one of the first insurance agencies in Florida to become automated. At that time, we didn't have this type of computer. Uh, we sent our stuff in a batch processing mode to a large mainframe computer that did the work. But uh, I felt that that was the way to go, and after about uh, 25 years being an insurance executive, I decided to uh, go full-time into computer consulting. Um, things have changed a great deal. We had an in-house computer that probably ran close to $100,000, it had a total of 16K memory. Uh, today, the least expensive model you can buy has about 640K. K means thousands. Mm -hmm. um, for example, a typical floppy disk, which we'll show you uh, a little later, can hold approximately 150 pages of text. The smaller 3.5-inch disks can hold uh, as much as three or four times that amount. I also have a Bernoulli box, which is another kind of memory storage, and that will hold 44 megabytes. I won't even give you the math on that, but thousands upon thousands of pages of text. Hard drives. Originally, in 1981, when the uh, IBM came out with their PC, or personal computer, it had, a, it had no hard drive at all. A little later, they came out with a 10 megabyte right. hard drive, which that. everybody thought would be sufficient for <laughs> at least 10 years in the future. Well, it's totally obsolete now. They went to 20 and 40, and now my personal computer has a 200 megabyte drive as well as dual 44 balloon. And, and a discs. megabyte is exactly how much? A megabyte is a million. It's not exactly a million, but we call it a million bytes, just like 640K is not really 640, but it's close enough to call it 640K. One megabyte is a little over. Actually, I think it's 2 to the 20th power. <laughs> OK, I'll buy that. <laughs> you won't get an argument from me. OK, so I guess basically what we're all agreeing on here is that uh, with the development of the personal computer, the user interface has gotten to the point where nobody really has to be afraid to sit down in front of a computer. It's not going to bite their heads off, and they are going to be able to be productive within a, a short period of time. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to bring out one other thought that you've probably heard before, but one of the things that has made computers 
so popular in, the, in recent years is the fact that memory, which computers use a lot of, has come down in price dramatically. Uh, about 15 or 20 years ago, memory was extremely expensive. Today, they say that if the Rolls Royce came down in price equivalent to the, to the way memory came down, you could buy one for about $35. It's unbelievable the way uh, computers have come down in price where everything else we deal with these days, like food and so forth, seems to be going up. That's great. Uh, I, I think what, what would be fun to do now would be to let each one of you get a chance to put you in maybe a, in an environment you feel more comfortable in in front of a computer and uh, show us a little bit. Would you like to go first, Alex? Absolutely. I'd be more than happy to. What I brought with me here today is the Amiga 3000. Just to give you a little bit of an idea, we have currently in this machine 18 megabytes of RAM, which is a substantial amount of RAM. Currently, we're running a ray tracing program on the computer. Now, as I mentioned earlier, one of the nice things that the Amiga has is the ability to be very user friendly. And instead of actually having to sit down and type a command, all I need to do is actually point to what I want, okay, double click on it, and then I can actually sit here and run the demonstration. When you also remember that I mentioned. Me, Alex, yes. The, when you're double clicking on something, how do you. How is it you distinguishing what it is? Basically, these are termed icons. And basically, what an icon does, it represents a program with, which is in the computer. So if I want to execute a program, I point to the program, double click on it, and then something the happens. That program is executed by the computer. You will also notice that I've to yet touched the keyboard, and I probably won't touch the keyboard as far as I'm sitting here. Here's a cartoon that was generated with one of the many popular programs that we have on the Amiga platform. Anything that you see on the screen on the Amiga can actually be put onto video. Our machines are 100% video compatible. So it means that I can actually create my cartoons, I can create titles, and I can superimpose these things right onto video, which is found to be a niche market for the Amiga. Uh, most of the professional television stations uh, and even private video companies are utilizing this type of system. Is, this, is, uh, is video the direction that Amiga is going heading towards the most? Well, apparently what's happening now with the particular market is the entire market is moving over towards video. The camcorder has finally come in down in price where a camcorder is very economical. And after the consumer gets bored of taping your, your standard 10, 15 minutes, you can now go back with an Amiga and actually superimpose titles on it. You can superimpose graphics. You can actually combine things like Winnie the Pooh, uh, dancing with your daughter if you wanted to. Great. Great graphics. That's great. Okay. The, the graphics are what makes the machine incredible. And one of the most popular programs in this platform is called Deluxe Paint 3. And let me show you a little bit about Deluxe Paint 3. And I know we're going to have some more software at a later time, but Deluxe Paint 3 really shows the capability of the machine. Now, I still have not touched the keyboard. I can actually sit here and use my computer monitor like I would a drawing screen. And I can select sizes. Okay, and what is happening is the cursor is following what I'm doing on the computer. I can also create animations, and we'll touch the screen for this one, or the keyboard, I should say. And watch the type of things we can do on the machine. And once again, these things are done very easily. You don't need to be a computer whiz. Uh, you don't even need to be computer literate to actually generate things of this nature. Animations are extremely easy to create. Graphics are extremely easy to create. Now, the other thing the machine has, which is also excels at, is the ability to generate sounds. I just move that one to the back. And there's my program still running back there. And I can actually come over here to my audio files. Mm -hmm. Point to Bugs Intro. Okay. And my program is still running in the background. This is what multitasking is all about. Multitasking is the ability to do multiple things simultaneously. Now, the Amiga line, and I know this is a hardware show, the Amiga line basically is a quite large, as far as price range and capability. Our low-end Amiga uh, starts somewhere in the $600 neighborhood, and we go all the way to the high end, which this machine has. This machine has a 68030 processor, uh, which is what really makes the system or the CPU, which you've heard before. 
Okay, Alex. Yes, sir. Uh, we're, we are going to be doing a lot more on the software on our next on our next show. I think what we'll do now is we'll, we'll bring on <coughs> Kim, and we'll talk about uh, the Apple for a couple of minutes. And, and before Kim comes on, I'd like to mention that we're going to have a show where we're going to feature the capabilities of desktop video, which is a very interesting subject, which will show the interaction between the, the Amiga computer and video, graphics, animation, sound. It's, it'll be a show okay. in and of itself. OK. Take a look at the Macintosh. This is what we call the desktop metaphor. So uh, basically, it represents your desktop that you would use on, um, at home, in your office. For example, we have a trash can down in the lower right-hand corner here. And this is where we would throw away documents and pieces of paper. On our real desk, we do the same kind of thing um, on the computer screen as well. We also have folders. These are called icons, as Alex pointed out. And the folder represents a subdirectory. A subdirectory is a place where files or papers are stored. Okay. If we double click on an icon, or in this case a folder, we can open it up and see the files that are available. Okay? And there are further folders inside of here, and they can be opened as well, and more pieces of paper can be stored in there. For example, word processing documents, um, etc. This is a program called PageMaker 4.0. It's a desktop publishing program, and it's used to create things like uh, the newsletters and brochures that I was speaking about before. And to start any program in the Macintosh, it's also the same as in the Amiga. You double click on the icon or the picture of the program and it starts up. This particular machine, I think, has about four megabytes of memory in it, so we have quite a bit less than the Amiga has. Um, in fact, this particular model has been discontinued. Apple just came out with three new models, the 2SI, the 2LC, and the Classic. And these products are in very limited um, availability right now. The LC is not even available until February. The SI and the Classic are currently available, but they're in very short supply and probably won't be available until early in 1991. Uh, Kim? Yes. I'd just, like, I'd just like to make a point for our audience, and that is, is that as they're, as they're going to be viewing the Apple on the screen, they're going to see a little bit of screen flicker. And that screen flicker is just a function of us videotaping the screen, and it just just so happens it's one of those technical things, and it's not what they see when they see it to, to the naked eye. It's just what the camera's picking and up. It would be a little bit difficult to work with it if it was always huh. flickering. Now, to me, it doesn't move at all. Okay. Um, to begin a document, it's very simple. We try to use what we call pull-down menus, which I brought up uh, just previously. Let me show you how that works again. This is called the command bar on the top of the screen where my arrow is pointing. And by holding the mouse button down on a word like file, I can open up a menu which shows me several choices of actions that I can perform in the computer. For example, I can start a new file, open an, an existing file, or close a file, save a file, etc. And depending upon the program that you're using, you're going to be getting different options. And the benefit of using a menued system is that you don't have to remember all the commands in your head. You can just look at the menus and do a menu search to find the things that you want to do. So in that, for that reason, the Macintosh is a very easy system to begin with. And I'll just do something very quickly here to show you some type. And I'm actually going to use my keyboard just to show you a little bit. Um, we have several different fonts available. That's what makes us great for desktop publishing or producing brochures. We have several choices. So we can get many different looks. And it's, it's very simple to do this. Um, a, a, a font basically is a different character type style. Typeface, exactly. Type you can see several samples here. I don't know how well that camera is picking this up. But these are the various type styles which are loaded on the system now. And you can add as many as you like, delete the ones that you don't use, et cetera. And there's a whole library mm -hmm. available now. I would say thousands of typefaces available. You can even design, design your own if you like. Uh, Kim, mm -hmm. I'm going to jump in here because we, sure. wanna, we, want, we have a few minutes left and we want to get a chance to take a look at, at the IBM PC platform. Right. And we are going to be coming back next week and looking at the software on all three of these machines much more extensively. So I think we'll let Jerry come up now and give us a few minutes on, Thank you, on, on Thank you. in an area where I, I feel at home, which is the PC. Um, before I put either hands on mouse or on the keyboard. I don't know if you can focus in on this thing, but this is a little mouse. And uh, two weeks ago, I came back from Comdex, which is the largest convention in the world, actually. It happens to be a computer convention. 
in Las Vegas, there were over 100,000 people there and 1,800 different exhibitors, where they showcase all the new products for computers. Apple was shown, I saw Amiga as well, but primarily it focuses on the IBM or MS-DOS platform. Uh, what you're looking at on the screen right now is Windows. And again, as do the other ones, we give two clicks on a particular icon and that program will come up on the screen. In this particular case, I called up a spreadsheet and a, I'm not going to go through the same functions about using the different menu items. They work exactly the same as they do uh, on the Apple or Macintosh. Um, some of the things that were in the forefront at Comdex, and I think it's worth talking about based on the title of this series of programs, is the future. And Comdex is the place where the companies talk about the future. Laptop computers, and even more so notebook computers, uh, was a principal item that most people were looking at and that most of the companies were bringing out. For example, uh, my first computer, personal computer, was back in about 1983, and it was a thing called a K-Pro, and it weighed about 25 pounds. It had very little power, and things have gotten a lot different since then. Today, uh, some of the laptops or notebook computers are only four pounds, and they have much more power, like 100 times more power than the original ones five or eight years ago. Um, back to the IBM, one thing I would like to mention is the fact that most, well, out, IBM probably outsells the others on a 10 to 1 basis, and primarily it's because of their business applications and business software, which I understand will be discussed in, in a later program. Uh, essentially, before Windows got popular, and it's just recently that it has become popular, Yes. The, the Windows, which is what I, IBM is trying to push now, is uh, the, what are they trying to do with that? Okay. <laughs> the well, truth I of the matter I is they're trying to emulate Apple, perhaps, or Macintosh, okay. in that they're trying to make it more user-friendly, an, an expression we all don't care for. But previous to Windows, when somebody turned on an IBM, what you came up with is a blank screen, perhaps, and a C prompt or an A prompt, and nobody knew what to do. Whereas with Windows, or for that matter, the other computers here, you can get started real quick by using icons. More and more software is being written for Windows, and uh, right at the moment, it takes some fairly, well, more expensive equipment. Excuse me, Jerry. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to break in now okay. because we're, we're, we're fast running out of time. And uh, our guests are going to be back next week. To We're going to go through the software more extensively. Right. So what I'd like to do now is thank our guests for, for being here today. They, they are going to be back next week. Also, I'd like to thank Caber Systems for providing us with some of the Apple and IBM computers. And our show, our show next week is going to focus on, on more specifically the software applications. And our guests will be back. And, and I, I hated to cut them short, but we were running out of time. We, we have many exciting topics coming up in, in, in the coming shows. If you have something of interest that you would like to see addressed on the show, contact us at the station and we'll be happy to address it. Until next time, thanks again and happy computing. Thank <laughs> you.